user interface includes an LED display and four keys for navigating the control functions. The reset key provides reset functions to clear faults or reboot the control. The up and down keys allow movement through the various menu items. The select key confirms or enters the selected data into the control. The LED display provides information for the current menu level. The status area indicates which menu or submenu is currently in the service window. The service area displays the data for the menu or submenu indicated by the status window. Above the icons at the bottom of the main display are LED indicators that will identify the various states the control is in. The LED above the call for heat symbol indicates call for heat. The LED above the flame signal indicates that there is a flame present in the burner. The flashing LED above the wrench symbol indicates that the menu level is currently being changed. The wrench LED on steady indicates the burner is in a manual mode. The LED above the fault symbol indicates the burner has an active fault condition. Let's look at some of the common menu functions and how they are accessed. Please read the manuals before installing or servicing any Beastman equipment. On power-up, the control goes through self-diagnostic. This also occurs after the control's reset key is pushed. After the self-diagnostic phase, the control will report the current maximum output percent setting, the current fuel setting as natural gas or LP gas, the current altitude setting below or above 5,000 feet, followed by burner diagnostic tests A and P. See the service manual for details regarding these tests. Without a call for heat, the control goes into standby, indicated by status 0 and service 0 on the display. Call for heat sequence of operation. Call for heat LED on, pre-ignition tests 1 and 2. P-test is performed, the same as it was for reboot phase on every call for heat. Step 3, pre-purge time, is approximately 60 seconds. For time's sake in this video, we're going to jump ahead to the end of pre-purge. Step 4, for a 186 burner, the choke valve opens. For a 286 or 311 burner, the damper closes. Let's look at step 4 and 5 with a 311 burner. At call for heat step 4, the damper closes. At step 5, the damper returns to the open position. Step 6 is the flame stabilization period. This is where the control checks to ensure that the flame is stable before releasing it to the temperature controller. Step 7 Modulation is released to the Videotronic Temperature Control. At call for heat step 8, the burner is shut off. Post purge is approximately 10 seconds. The control then returns to the standby mode. Checking the flame signal. All menu level 5 parameters can be enabled with the burner on or off. Flame signal is located in the menu 5 level. A chart of the level 5 menu items can be found in the CM2 service manual. Flame signal can be checked at submenu level 3. At a 1 tenth microamp resolution, a displayed signal of 146 represents 14.6 microamps. 
from any zero status menu, press S for two seconds. Select up to menu 5, press S to enter menu 5. Select option 3 from submenu 5, then select S again to read the current flame signal. The current flame signal is shown in the service window. A displayed value of 146 represents 14.6 microamps. To exit back to the main menu, select S, go up to 5, then press S twice. Operating the burner in manual modulation mode for testing. There is no timeout for this mode. The burner will only shut down on a manual safety limit, such as low water cutoff, fixed high limit, or vent high limit. To enter the manual burner modulation mode, the burner must be running in automatic mode, indicated by status 0 and service 7. Press the down key and the S keys together for two seconds to enter the manual burner mode. The status window shows P. The service window shows the current burner modulation position. The service display will flash and the LED above the wrench icon will stay on steady during this mode. Using the up and down arrow keys, the burner can be commanded into any position within the modulation range. Pressing the S and down arrow keys together returns the system to automatic burner operation. Reducing the burner's maximum operational input. Start with the burner in standby. Press S for two seconds. Service displays 1 and the wrench icon flashes. Use the up key to go to 6 in the service window. Select S, sublevel 1 appears. Select S again to enter sublevel 1. The current maximum input percent is displayed. Use the arrow keys to select the desired maximum percent input. Select S, then S again to accept the new maximum percent input. Reset the control to verify the new maximum percent input. Setting up the burner for operation with LP gas. The burner is shipped from the factory set for natural gas. The supplied LP gas kit must be installed before the following procedure is done. See the installation instructions for the correct steps to convert the burner to LP gas using the kit supplied with the burner. Start with the burner in standby. Press S for two seconds. Service displays 1 and the wrench icon flashes. Use the up key to go to 6 in the service window. Select S, then up to 2. Select 
ask again to enter sublevel 2. Select option 1 in sublevel 2, then S again to enter the data. Select S again, then the reset key to reboot the control and ensure that the changes were saved. setting up the burner for installations above 5,000 feet. Start with the burner in standby. Press S for two seconds. Service displays one and the wrench icon flashes. Use the up key to go to six in the service window. Select S, then up to sublevel 3, then S again. Select option 1 from sublevel 3, select S to enter the data. Select S again, then the reset key to reboot the control and ensure that the changes were saved.